And what I've loved about the performance is as good as the football's been is, is the pressing from the very first minute um, without the ball. You know, and the, the, I think City are one of the best teams at doing that. They don't always get the credit for doing it, but mm -hmm. um, the pressing from the front, the, the high line leaving and Brighton no space at all when they're trying to play out because that's their game, you know, and, and they can be very good at it, but they've just found it impossible to try and get out and it's been, it's been great to watch. Now, we've talked so much about Manchester City moving forward and how they attack, but Sean, uh, actually, when we don't have the ball, as Paul's just said there, that press is relentless and going in at half-time, they must be shattered because they just go at it non-stop for 45 minutes. Um, yeah, they totally do. I think... Kevin De Bruyne um, nicked one late on in the f in the first half where he um, he squared it back into um, Jesus where he did hit the bar. But I think that that is why they press so high because then they win the ball further up the pitch and it's one or two passes, maybe not even that, and uh, they could have a chance out of it. The press, of course, um, highlights so many great things. But one thing for me is actually going in a game where, yes, three points does kind of guarantee you're going to get that second position. As we've said, your mind might be creeping towards... The, the game against Arsenal, the Champions League coming up, but with a press like that, it says, no, they're very much focused on that game there and they're not going to let up for anybody regardless of the game. Yeah, they're massively focused and, you know, the, the manager wouldn't, wouldn't expect anything less for them True. because if you don't do as what at, at most levels, but especially with Pep Guardiola, if you don't do what he's asking you to do, you're not going to be in his team. Mm -hmm. And we spoke about before the game, the big games I've got coming up and it's been fantastic. I think Gabriel Jesus sets it off from the front. I think his hold-up play tonight has been outstanding. Yeah. Thoroughly deserves his goal. You know, I said when, when his chance hit the bar, I, I did say that he deserves a goal tonight but for, for the work, the unselfish work he's been doing for the team. But it's all over the pitch. You know, if the ball goes wide, Kyle Walker's the first man out there pressing. Um, the, the winger in front of him is back there helping him back. Um, Rodri's in front of the back fours and making Laporte and Garcia's life easy for them but because they're pressing all over the pitch and, and Brighton just can't get out. I've got to say, Benjamin Mendy as well, we've seen quite a few times he is uh, up and down that left wing, but also uh, he's winning that ball back. As soon as he loses it, he's the first to pounce on it. He's the first to, to go for it. And there's been a lot of criticism, I'd say, about Benjamin Mendy for some of the mistakes that he has made uh, in previous games. But he does seem to be improving the more game time that he does get, Paul. Yeah, look, there's no, no real bonuses about what's happened in lockdown. Um, but I think from a football point of view, getting um, Benjamin Mendy and Jimmy Rick Laporte, it's gave them the opportunity to get back fit and possibly, I mean, I don't know for sure, but get a mini pre-season, if not a full pre-season, within them after the injury problems that they've had. I think Benji's looking um, as fit as I've seen him. He's looking as lean as he has done uh, in a long time. And that's shown in the energy and the quality that he's, that he's putting out in his performances. Definitely. Now, we want to hear from you at home as well, so make sure you do use that hashtag WNRH. You can send us all of your pictures, you can send us your thoughts and reactions to the game. We will be back at full time as well, but we've got some tweets which are, uh, I'm always talking about stats, so I've Here got some is. for us to, to chat about. Here all he right. is. Uh, Squawker <laughs> Football uh, tweeted saying Raheem Sterling has now scored 25 goals across all competitions in back-to-back -back seasons. One more, and he sets uh, a new personal best for him. Uh, Opta Joe have tweeted to say uh, Manchester City have scored 15 Premier League goals from outside the box this season. Of course, Raheem Sterling's uh, made it 15 uh, today. Uh, three more than any other side. And another one uh, from Sky Sports Stato. It says Raheem Sterling, 25th goal this season, joint career best. Most Premier League goals for Man City. Uh, there's 180 for Sergio Aguero, 63 for Raheem Sterling, 62 for Yaya Torre and 15 for David Silva. So Raheem Sterling, he's got one more than Yaya Torre and Paul, he's still got plenty of playing days left ahead of him. He has and he's been outstanding again tonight. You know, and we spoke off air as the game started or when he scored his goal that we spoke about um, David Silva, we spoke about Mares, we spoke about De Bruyne. We didn't even give Raheem a mention, which, <laughs> is, which is crazy. You know, and, and he's, he's been on really good form. I know um, before lockdown, people are making a big thing that he hadn't scored for a little bit but he's, he's shut them up already coming back in and he, his finish tonight was quality you know the, the move was quality a little fantastic little touch from Gabriel Jesus and the touch inside and the finish and, and, and that's where he's been so lethal in the last couple of seasons you know people have always pointed the finger at his end product his end product's world class now Sean, it seems that he's added so much to uh, to his game. What have you seen from him and what have, what do you think he's improved with most over uh, the time he's been at Manchester City, but also with working with Pep Guardiola? Um, I, th I think he's improved a lot in his positioning and getting into the box and putting himself in very dangerous 
um, positions on the on the pitch. And like Dickie said, he, his end product, what people were talking about before, it, it's come on leaps and bounds. And he's in that world class league now. And all he can do is just keep doing what he's doing. And he's only going to get better and better at it. I think as well. I think before maybe a couple of seasons ago, or before Pep came in, Raheem was a winger, wanted to be the provider, didn't mind if he was setting up the goals and not mm -hmm. scoring them. He wants to score in every single game now, you know, and it's that mentality and hunger I think that Pep's brought to him, and you've got to give him credit because he's took it on board. You know, he, he wants to shoot, he wants to take players on. He's not just happy creating now, he wants to score goals. Now, I can't be sat here with Paul Dickoff, Sean Wright Phillips as well, heroes for me growing up. Without mentioning this one, another hero, uh, Sean Gota has tweeted uh, to said uh, he said I've seen enough of Gabriel Jesus to know his best performance is nearing with each game. Strikers' instinct. Paul, you mentioned something when we were watching the game, saying about his positioning and how he actually was alive and alert in the box for his goal. He was ready to jump on it and make sure that ball went in the back of the net. Absolutely, and, and people will, will watch that and think oh, it was an easy tap in. He's got to react to the to Rodri's header and react very quickly and, and be mentally, not just physically alive to do it, but be mentally alive and believing that the ball's going to come to him. And, and that's an art in itself. And, you know, I'll, I keep saying it and I've got to be in my bonnet about him not scoring enough goals. That's his 20th goal this, this season. Yeah. And he's in all competitions and he's not starting every single week. You know, and I think it's, is it 60, high 60s, 70 odd goals since he's been here and he's not starting every week. The, the kid's a goal scorer. I've got some more stats about him actually here. Come on, just, mate. I've just seen them. All right. Gabriel Jesus has had a strong first half for Man City. He has created three chances in the match, second to KDB's four, completed the most dribbles with five, and won the most duels, five. Also, notching a goal and an assist. Can he help City win the Champions League this season? That's from Sports Untangled. Kel, as a fan, You've got to see everything else he does, not just scoring, but as I've said there, he's all over, and that performance uh, against Real Madrid, it shows you that he's key in us winning that Champions League. 100%, and I, th I think that says everything. You always look to see whether these players, can they do it week in and week out, but then can they emulate it on the European stage, and he just seems to do it on a consistent basis. And like in that Sean Gota tweet, seems to be getting better and better. I think for me as well, my favourite thing is, because I was buzzing off him when we signed him when he was a young Brazilian, but actually having come over here and then under Pep, he seems to have just become an all-round forward that is not only comfortable in the middle, but actually anywhere along that front three, which initially I just thought we were signing an out-and-out -out striker. That adaptability has just got a... a I don't know, it has to come from a level of maturity as well to be able to do that at such a young age, Paul. Yeah, a level of maturity and, and a really, really good football brain. Yeah, you know, and, and he's a strong boy, and um, we know that, and he's a tough boy. We've seen that when he first came over. I think people were looking, thinking a young Brazilian coming over, can he handle Premier League? He showed very early on that, that physically he can do that, and he's got stronger with that. But he's, I keep going back to it, he's a goal scorer. You know, and um, the biggest thing for me, in the simplest way to put it, is if Sergio was out injured and Pep Guardiola, who's the best, didn't think Gabriel Jesus was up to it, he wouldn't be playing. Yeah. That is exactly what I say week in, week out when people are, are being outspoken about these players and they're, they're criticising them. I think this is Pep. that He's choosing this team and he sees what they're like in training. He sees and understands what they're like on the pitch because his footballing knowledge is next to none. He's one of the best managers in the world and we have to put our trust in, in Pep Guardiola that he knows what he's doing. And when we're seeing Gabriel Jesus, going back to that Sean Gota tweet right there, he's getting better and better and he's improving. And how many players have we seen improve under Pep? We've talked about Raheem Sterling. We've seen what Gabriel Jesus has done. Kevin De Bruyne as well. We, we've seen absolutely everything, haven't we? Ab well, absolutely everything and then some. And it still yeah. feels like we actually aren't reaching the, the, the peak of it yet. Like you say, we're going in at 2-0. But actually, it could be 4-5. And, and Sean, this is something that happens on a regular basis. It definitely feels like, for the, for the standard that we've set, is unbelievably high. But it still feels like it could be raised another bar higher. Um, yeah, most definitely. You can see, especially early on in the game, how many chances we created. And um, Jesus was part of all of them. He was always in the box, ready to pounce. Um, and I think if those chances had fell to him a bit later, knowing Jesus, he would have finished those chances. So I think the chances are going to come a, a lot again in the second half. And it's just a matter of us taking them. Well, speaking of that second half, the predictions are very much still within a shout here in the studio. And I know you mentioned before as well the a Jesus hat trick, which still very much is on the cards. I mean, we could be at, be at two goals already, Paul, so looking promising. Yeah, it is. Um, and I'll go back to the Gabriel Jesus thing, and I just 
in case I haven't made my point clear about them already. <laughs> How many non-starters have scored 20 goals already in a season at any other club? You've not? No. Well, the funny thing is, the, the sentence that usually gets said is, can you bring in a striker who's going to score you 20 goals a season starting every single game? That, isn't it? That's what you usually look for. Yeah. Not that. And the fact that we've, we've got someone who can do that alongside Sergio Aguero, we know what Sergio can do as well. And it feels like there's so much attacking force. But Gabriel Jesus is a, a world-class striker in his own right as well. And I'd say that, yes, Sergio Aguero's there. It's very easy to make that comparison. But we have to really understand and we have to respect what Gabriel Jesus brings to this team and actually he's a world-class striker in his own right Paul. I think so and I said a few years ago he's going to be a superstar and I still genuinely believe that Agreed. and you know we talk, spoke about his, um, um, his ad adaptability if that's a word I just made that word adaptability. up. Adaptability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, before and he can play anywhere across um, the front line and you know, people forget that him and Sergio can, can play together, together and, yes. have yes. Done, yes. and have done very well before. It's a shame that we haven't seen that more, but um, hopefully come next season we will get treated to that. All right, 2-0 at half-time. We've got the second half to bring you, and then you can come join us at full-time where we'll get into all of the second half and the game as a whole. Enjoy the rest of the game. 